in the discussion today, we want to see the application of the labor demand curve, and we want to see the effect of employer payroll taxes on labor demand. Payroll taxes is the taxes calculated based on certain percentage that employers need to pay from their workers' salaries. There are two ways how payroll taxes are collected. The first one, the one that we will focus today is the employers would pay the payroll taxes to the government. And another one is the employees would pay it to the government from the salaries received. Looking at this question, who bears the burden of a payroll tax? There are a few factors that will influence this. Among others, it depends on the elasticity of the demand for labor and also the elasticity of the supply of labor. In general, both employers and employees would bear some consequences of the payroll taxes. The revenue from the payroll taxes are used for the following welfare programs. For example, to pay for employment insurance, social security retirement, disability allowance, and Medicare or Medicaid program. In our example, we will assume that X to be the fixed amount of tax per labor hour that will be paid by the employer. Rather than we are looking at a case of percentage of payroll tax paid by the employer. Note that we are looking at X as a fixed amount of tax per hour of labor. Let's consider this diagram. Here we have the demand for labor. D0 indicates the initial level of the labor demand curve. And then S0 indicates the supply of labor. Over here, we have the equilibrium point, And we find that W0 is the equilibrium wage rate and E0 is the level of equilibrium employment. When the government imposes X level of payroll tax upon the employer, that would shift the labor demand curve from D0 to D1. D1 now is our new demand for labor as a result of the introduction of the payroll tax. There are a few points that we need to pay attention to. Let's focus on point A. This is point A. At point A, we find that there is a reduction in the level of employment, where now this employer would only hire E2 level of workers. The workers would still receive W0 level of wage from their employer. However, some of the workers have been laid off. Another important thing to note here is when the employers hire E2 level of workers, the employer's wage bill is actually indicated by point C, where the employer's wage bill is actually given by W0 plus X. W0 is the amount of money paid to the workers and X is the money goes to the government in the form of payroll tax. Notice that the level of employment is given by point A where here we trace that E2 is the level of employment. W0 is the amount of money received by the workers from the employer and the employer's wage bill, their total cost of hiring E2 is given by W0 plus X. So that's the things that we notice as the outcome of the payroll tax. We find that employment level has decreased and employers have to pay more in terms of their wage bill. That's because of the salary they pay to their workers and the burden of the payroll tax. Now let's move to another set of analysis where we look at another possibility. If the employer wants to maintain E0 level of employment, despite the payroll tax now. For that, the employer then would pay their workers W0 minus X. W0 minus X here is the level of wage paid to the workers when the employer wants to maintain 
E0 level of employment. And the wage bill for the employer is actually W0. Notice I have explained point A, B and C. Now you can see the effect of the payroll tax on both employer and also employees. The burden of the payroll tax is borne by both the employer and the employees. In this analysis, we see a case of a vertical supply curve indicating an inelastic supply of labor. It means that workers are not responsive to any change in the wage rate. Now, let's consider the case of the payroll tax again, where we have X level of payroll tax, and that would shift the demand of labor from D0 to D1. Since the supply of labor is not sensitive to the change in the wage rate, what will happen here is employer can take advantage of this, maintaining the same level of employment at E0 and pay the workers W0 minus X level of wage rate. What we find in this case is the entire burden of the tax are borne by the employees and employer could still have the same level of employment. The wage bill to the employer is W0, which is the same before and after the introduction of the payroll tax. In this example, we see that the burden of the payroll tax depends on the elasticity of the labor supply curve. So that's about the analysis of the payroll tax. Apart from the payroll tax, sometimes the government may also introduce employment subsidies as a device to help the poor in terms of improving the level of employment in the economy. During the COVID-19 crisis, many governments, including the Malaysian government, has introduced the wage subsidies. Government subsidies of employers' payroll could be, for example, government can give cash payments to employers or even to employees. Government may also introduce tax credit to employers. Okay, now we want to see the effect of wage subsidy. Let's X be the fixed amount of subsidy that the government paid the employer per labor hour. Let's draw the diagram. The horizontal line measures the level of employment and over here we measure the level of wage rate. This is the original supply of worker S0 and this is the initial level of employment D0. And let's say W0 is the level of equilibrium wage rate before the subsidy and E0 is the initial level of employment before the subsidy. With the introduction of the subsidy, that will shift the demand for labor to this level. Let's say to D1. There is a shift in the demand for labor as a result of the wage subsidy. And let's identify a few points here. Let's say this is point A. At point A, we find that E1 will be the new level of employment where now, due to the subsidy, this employer is willing to hire more workers and the workers are still receiving W0 level of salary because the wage bill for the employer is now W0 minus X. The employer, in this case, received subsidy from the government. So the government is paying the employer X amount of money and with that the employer can hire more workers and pay the workers the same level of salary. So this is one of the benefits of wage subsidy. To conclude, in this session we have seen the effect of payroll tax and also the effect of wage subsidy. I hope you will read the textbook carefully to understand more about the discussion today. See you in another session. Thank you. Wassalam.